this um, patch of dirt back here is where the double wide trailer used to sit. And we have crunched up the house and hauled all the trash away. We've taken out the trailer frames and, and cut those up. Um, and we've disconnected the utilities. We're working on finishing up the water line. It was kind of, um, this was set up, the, the electrical permits show that this was dragged in here and set up in 1996, which makes this thing 23 years old. The trailer itself was a 73, but it was obviously purchased, used, or brought from somewhere else and then set up here. Um, some of the things that we found were that the trailer was really well set up. It was um, uh, had a full slab foundation um, underneath it, and the cinder block sat on that, and then it had engineered ties from the frame down to the foundation. Um, and I think that was so it could be sold as real property. Um, with that engineering and it permanently tied to the ground, it made it a permanent structure here. Um, but it made a lot, a lot more difficult to try and pull out all of that concrete. Had a lot of rebar in it. We ended up hauling a lot more loads than we thought we were going to haul. Um, we ended up hauling 23 dump truck loads out of here. Um, total, total loads. Um, and we were, we were, we were thinking maybe 13 to 15 at the, at the most. I was really surprised, especially considering. Uh, a lot of the t materials that we repurposed and were able to sell at a discounted fraction of the retail price and and send to to other places. Um, in fact, I had people come as far as almost two hours away from uh, Montana to to buy windows, to pick up doors. Um, so a lot of the stuff uh, I don't I don't know even how to quantify that, but. A lot of stuff got hauled out of here that we would have hauled to the dump, um, so so that helps. But a lot of material. It'll it'll always surprise you if you're doing a demo on your property and you're thinking, ah, it's not that big of a structure. Um, figure out what whatever you think it's going to take and double that, and that'll probably be closer to the reality of what you're looking at. Um, there's just a lot of the of the un, unseens. Uh, the foundation, that trailer frame, all of that metal. Um, there's just more to that house. You think, oh, it's not much. It's going to crunch down. Well, it, it doesn't. Still got a lot of volume to it, even though it may not have the weight. Um, so, I think that this has gone really well. We've been at this. Um, yeah, maybe 10 days, two weeks. Two, so two working well we had a holiday in there we had um, so yeah we probably got nine working days on this eight working days on this to make the whole thing go away which has gone really really great um, we've it's been a fun project we've really enjoyed working with the owner on this one it's that's sometimes having the right owner makes all the difference in the world and this owner has been great to work with uh, easy to communicate, available, he picks up the phone when you call, he makes decisions, um, he understands what you're up against, he's, he's got experience in, in business and getting things done and so it's been it's been a really fun project. Um, sometimes you'll get a homeowner that doesn't have a lot of, of construction experience or business experience and, and making some of those decisions can be difficult or overwhelming or oh can I call you tomorrow or let me think about it for a while. Um, so we really got lucky on this project that we had a, a good homeowner work with on this one. Um, the plan is um, now that this is all cleaned up and we've capped off the water line, we've capped off the power and we've capped off the, the septic, um, they're going to look at this property and try to figure out where they want to situate a new home and it'll probably take them probably take them a few months to get plans done and engineering and make all of those decisions which is not going to give us enough time this year to get that project started and closed in enough for winter so we'll probably wait until next spring and then next spring be able to start early spring right after the breakup and, and the mud season and when things start to dry out again 
June sometime, May, June, whenever, um, be able to come back out here and, and start a house. Um, and this is going to be great with it, with the utilities already here and power and water on site. Uh, from a builder's perspective, this thing is cleaned up, it's set up, uh, it's it's ready to go. So this this will be this will be a fun project to work on. Um, uh, what else can I tell you? What have I what have I learned from this that you you can apply? Um, I think one of the things that really reached out and bit us was some of the variables that we didn't have control of. Um, now, when we looked at this project and we looked at bidding this project, we went and drove from here, from the site, to the dump. And we timed that to try to understand what the trucking rounds were going to take to try to get a feel for trucking and what that was going to cost and what it was going to take. Um, but here's what happens. Where we had to go, they started road construction and that road construction was amplified with a holiday weekend and a lot of people being in town to the point where there was stop and go traffic and it added 20 to 30 minutes depending on the time of day for our trucks to get loaded and drive there and come back and when you figure 20 loads and you're picking up say 30 minutes a load um, suddenly you've got an additional 10 hours of trucking time that you weren't planning on but you're for sure going to be paying that trucking time um, because that, that if that truck's working for you, he's not working for somebody else. So when you think 10 hours in trucking, that, that's an, an entire day, an additional day of trucking that we paid for that there wasn't much we could do about that because there was no way we could control the traffic. There was no other ways around. There's a river. There's a single point across the bridge. It just it is what it is so something to consider if you're doing demo on your project um, your house your homestead whatever it might be if you're trying to, to, to budget and plan for costs drive that route but don't just look at how long it took you in the car on that day consider is there road construction is there holiday traffic that might happen are there other events in town that may slow down traffic at a certain time because those types of things will cost you money um, on that project. And when you, th when you talk about trucking at 100 or $125 an hour, 10 hours, $1,200 is a lot of money that, that you, did, you may or may not have planned for. So something to consider as you're, as you're doing demo and clean up around your place, and if you're running trucks back and forth, those are some things to consider that are outside. Those are, are variables that are going to be outside of your control that you need to consider as you budget and plan your project. Um, let's see, what else? Um, at the dump, um, there's traffic at the dump as well, and there's also a line of people circling in and out. So if we were hauling metal to the dump and trying to get unloaded, um, two things. If you're waiting for other cars to get out of the way, that truck is sitting there waiting for them to get out, and then our truck is getting in. Now we had some hang-ups. Uh, some of our metal, you know, loading this scrap metal in the dump truck, got hung up and wouldn't come out. So our driver is out there trying to pull metal out of the back. Now three different loads he's got to get out and monkey with it or go get a loader and have the loader come over and help unload that steel because it's gotten wedged in that truck. Uh, there again, it's more time, it's more money, and you, and it's it's going to cost you for that kind of stuff. Oh. Hello, it's Josh. Hey, sir. Hey, uh, how we doing, man? So we've got we've got the water uh, line dug up, capped off. It's ready to go. I I would. Uh, if you had a few minutes to swing by and turn on the water, and we could see that. Uh, that we don't have any leaks before we uh, before we close it up. Okay. See you in a minute. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Awesome. So um, we've been working back here on the on the water line, and um, some somehow when we dis when we dis 
disconnected the frame we bumped the water line and we pulled apart a joint and the joint was leaking so we had to kind of big dig back down the line till we could find that joint um, and then cap everything off and now I've got the water company coming back out they'll turn the water on we'll be able to kind of test it uh, make sure that everything is not leaking and then we'll mark where the end of that water line is we'll bury a, a stick or a pipe or something down there and that way when we come back it'll be really slick and easy to find the water line and tie into it and and run that water line up to the house wherever that house may end up being so great news we can uh, turn the water on check this thing make sure there's no leaks and then get it backfilled and then we've got one trailer load of stuff we need to haul out of here. There's a washing machine and a freezer and some lumber and stuff that I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take home for myself. And then I, I gotta come back and get the machine. And then it's it's off to the next project. Nothing. Oh, winner, winner. There we go. It's a little dirty. Beautiful. Well, I, I'm running the spigot in it just to burp the air out of it. Yeah, wash those hands, Mr. Nasty. This spigot's open in a muddy water coming out of it. It seems pretty good now. But it's getting clear. Yeah. So, okay, let's, let's turn that off. Did you just crack it? Let, let's, I think we're ready for, uh, for a real test. <laughs> 